Yes, welcome back. This is uh, the second part of the video where we actually start to do the mapping then. And um, we can switch off here the public transportation layer. We don't need that anymore. And we just use the OpenStreetMap layer. Why do we do that? It's a lot easier to actually see the route here. Uh, as you can see, it goes here all the way across the Marcus Highway. Actually, it says here Ben Palispis uh, Highway. Um, I'm not sure I cannot verify that, I, but I think actually this road has alternative names, also an open street map. Let's stick here to the alternative routes. You can see here there's on Legada Road a line, there's a road on Kisap Road, and there's a line here at Lake Drive. So these are the alternative routes cheap drivers can choose from. Um, I didn't actually write this one myself yet, but I know all the Jeeps, they prefer to take down this road here. Then they go here, Shunham Street. Then they go here, the short road on Kisa Road, onto the uh, Del Pilar Road. Then they go to the Garda Road. Then they drive here. And then they go here all the way up to Marcus Highway. So you need to know some local uh, local knowledge. Um, then they take care the actually the the split. So the ones it's still two routes right now, and the ones that go to don't are going to go here to the western side, and the ones that go to Balaclava they go here down this road. Uh, as you can see, it goes all the way down here. Oh, and here's the, the turning point. So this is the Bakakang Road. They do not go all the way to the Bakakang Road. That would actually be better if they would do that, because you could easily step over from one line to the next line. So if the Jeep drivers would actually be told, go up the road here and here you turn around, where also the Baka can goes. Then you have here a staging area for both Jeeps, so people here can choose. They can choose to take that line or that line, and someone here who might want to go there, right now they have to go all the way, use the Jeep to the city center, and then walk to the next Jeep line, and then go back all the way to get there. So someone living there, who wants there, has now to go first into the city center and then back here, which could have been made a lot easier if this Jeep would connect there. Then they could just take the Jeep here, step over, take the Jeep up the hill here, and then they're back. Then they're where they want to be. But that's another point. Um, when they go back from here, um, Yeah, I, I know from Dontagon the Jeep drivers, they usually go down here, down to BGH, and then they go around the roundabout, take the Kisev Road, and then they go up here, and they go down Abenau Street, and then back here. That's usually how they ride. So this is the, the line. You, Again, this is local knowledge. You've got to know that how the jeeps usually ride. I'm I'm quite often in this area, so I know their their trips. They're taking the tours, and this lake drive. Where is that? Oh, that one. That's the lake drive. If if they want to take the lake drive, they got to drive here, and then they go on the UP drive, then they go along the convention center, then they go here, down to Harrison Road and then they take the lake drive. They usually do not use that that one. They usually pick this one here on Kisap Road. Mm. So the question is which one are we going to map? Well, let's skip lake drive. They usually don't take that. And just let's map this one I pointed out. Going here over the guard road towards Balakbak and coming back using Kisap Road. Um, yeah, so I started open street map already. What I do in open street map usually is I have a center point 
here. This is center point that's at the center of um, of the park, and um, this here that's at a distance of 10 kilometers. That's four points. So what I do is I have one point at the center of Baguio, then I have four points around that point, and the distance is 10 kilometers in any direction. So what the what the JOSM editor sees is a trace like this, like a square. Then I have the next square you can see here, it says 20, that's 20 kilometers. Now why do I do that? I can show you. You open a GPX trace, we just need this one for now, because we don't map outside of Baguio. Um, this point here, you can see it's at the center of the park, and um, Burnham Park, by the way. Um, when you click here on the right of this GPX data, which is just a point, you can say download from OSM along this track. So what you do is you download all that data offline and within 5000 meters, that's the maximum. That's why the next line is 10 kilometers. So if I have a point in the middle, and then I have four points here, each one is like 10 kilometers distance, then with five kilometers, which is the maximum, I cover all tiles, I download everything, so I have all the information from the database then. Uh, the maximum area per request, that's a tricky one. Um, if you download too much data at once, then you will get an error. To avoid errors, you need to minimize that. So if you're downloading some uh, provincial area, rural area, you can set this to 25 and you're okay. But if you're in a city center with a lot of data, buildings, polygons, etc., nodes, um, this will give you an error. So you pick the three and then you say download this new layer and it will tell you it's split up the download group request in 64 individual download requests so you don't get an error and just let click OK and let's download Baguio this is always the part where it takes a while but um, trust me you want to work like this in JOSM the connection to the servers which are hosted in Amsterdam in the Netherlands or near Amsterdam in the Netherlands they're quite okay for my connection here with PLBT, but you get the latency, and that's very annoying because if you scroll over a map and you download while you're scrolling, well, with a latency of 200 milliseconds for every scroll you make, so when you scroll, it's like 200 milliseconds, 200 milliseconds, 200 milliseconds, 200. So in the end, if you scroll, you always get this the screen which is hitting at you back with a delay of. Um, seconds in total and it's annoying to work it's like uh, a car that do doesn't want to start and you need to give it a few attempts before it actually starts it's simply good annoying so I favor JOSM because of that right now I can download all this information in a single download and um, I don't have this issue anymore with um, with the actual waiting because of scrolling. I'm going to stop here the video again and make a third video. Um, it's easier if it's cut in small parts. So this was the analysis basically uh, how do we interpret the data we get, the official data and um, downloading our data set to work with and I will start a new video once this is completed.